All right then, everybody, we're back and we are doing a final episode for this week. We are tackling the Honda Ridgeline, which um, is probably the oddest one on this list as yes, it is, it is the shape of a mid-sized truck, but it isn't really one because it's just it's it's different well and we'll get into that right now so um horsepower and stuff is actually doing very well it's at like um not like it's it's 260 horsepower which is good enough for its category um uh obviously some of the other trucks that we've covered have slightly higher horsepower ratings in the 300s but for it to be 260 it does only have the one engine option so that's what you got to work with so you know it's every version of it has 260 horsepower and one of the I guess more interesting things about it is starting price is at 30 grand that's actually fairly high compared to some of the other ones where most of these all have at least a twenty thousand dollar ish range as in like the Frontier could start at like 18 grand and the Chevrolet could start at 20 and the Ford and Toyota could be in that 25 range so it's it's expensive compared to the other ones but it that is for a good reason this is an odd truck because it is very much a luxury vehicle and I mean we're talking Honda here and so you know not the name of luxury but this this truck is in a peculiar state where they got away from it being the avalanche the last generation of honda ridge line where it was a chevrolet avalanche they're the same freaking thing but now it has it has very much a truck shape but one of the biggest indicators that it's just different than the rest is if you go up to one of their beds they are about half as deep as a colorado or tacoma or any other brand even the frontier they are all different or they're all much bigger than the Ridgeline. The Ridgeline actually doesn't have space back there because it is taken up by a cooler slash trunk in the bed. It also has a two-way opening tailgate so you can fold it down like normal or swing it out. And if you do that, there's a little latch and you can fold up half of the tail bed and there is a hole trunk basically it does have a drain in the bottom so you can fill it up with ice and you know take it to parties tailgating things like that and that's where it's starting to, like the party truck or luxury kind of truck starts to come out those kinds of things uh, it also has speakers in the bed so if you have your phone connected to your bluetooth you can turn the truck off and have your audio go through the bed which is different like i i know toyotas and nissans don't have that ford ranger we don't know yet because it's not out and i'm I want to go 99% sure that the Chevrolet doesn't have it. So, it's got that. It also rides a little bit better. It does have a two-wheel drive option, but otherwise, I'm, I mean, the dealerships that I've seen, they always get them with all-wheel drive. The only one on this list to have all-wheel drive and not four-wheel drive. And some people are always a little bit hazy on the difference. They are essentially the same thing, but, a four, but an all-wheel drive system is, is smarter than four-wheel drive four-wheel drive you engage low or high and you just get your power distributed to all the wheels pretty evenly and that's just it's more of a it's considered a bit more rugged and for tougher terrain while an all-wheel drive system is most of the time only partially all-wheel drive it usually like in your day-to-day -day time it usually only has like two wheels going at the same time typically I mean it's front or back just depends on what the system is and then when it detects that traction is uh, not suitable it will engage the other wheels now there are some vehicles things like uh, higher-end vehicles like a Nissan GTR where its all-wheel drive is constant or like a Lamborghini uh, Huracan those are constant all-wheel drives they're always on and they are always giving you all your power it's usually distributed distributed sorry distributed a little different it's usually depending on the vehicle it's never really 50 50 it's usually like 65 70 up front 45 40 30 that kind of thing or sorry 65 70 75 and the back and the less power up front uh for traction things like that better launches but for this kind of vehicle it has all-wheel drive just so it does better in harsher weather and by harsh we're talking about like 
if you live in a snowier climate, snow throughout the city and things. This this truck isn't necessarily meant to go off roading. It could, it definitely could, but eh. Uh, also, its towing capacity is very limited to the other trucks, where the other trucks are sitting at the 6,000 to 7,000 range. Whereas the Ridgeline has, if you get the two-wheel drive option, it can tow 3,500 pounds, and if you get the all-wheel drive, it can tow 5,000. But that's still less than everyone else. In fact, I believe the Colorado, I think even with the V6 and not the diesel, you're still looking at like over 6,000. I know with the diesel, you're looking at 7,100. So it's lacking in that category, but it's just so different. And if you get something like a black edition, uh, Ridgeline, uh, it's full of leather. It's actually very nice to sit in. It's very comfy. It is a nice vehicle. It's just not a good truck. It's a fine truck as in like it has a bed to put stuff in, but it's so small and uh, no extended cabs or anything like that available. You just get the truck. The same Ridgeline will be the same no matter what, just different color and interior options. But otherwise, everything is pretty much the exact same on all of them. So it's very different than everyone else. But it's still, it's good in its own way. Trucks have started to turn towards, especially high-end trucks, where you can get a 1500 of any brand pretty much and get them up to 60, 70, 80 grand, and they are fully luxury vehicles without a doubt that have the capabilities now this is it is those but just on a smaller scale they do a, you can get a ridge line up to 40 and 50 grand but you're definitely getting a different vehicle if that makes sense it's definitely not the same thing as one of those higher ones but um it's a little different i kind of like it it's a uh, I don't know if it's worth the money if you just want a comfy vehicle and just need the tail bed open some of the time, but you do want a nicer vehicle, you just don't want an SUV. The Ridgeline is an option. Is is It's a pretty good option, actually, um, if that is specifically what you're looking for. So for that market, the Ridgeline kind of has it. No one else really has a truck like it. Uh, but of course, if you were looking for something very cheap and wanted an exposed bed just because you need it, you'd probably go Frontier. And then if you want off-road capabilities, you'd go with the other three, Chevy, Toyota, and Ford. So everyone has their spot. Of course, those three that I just named off are kind of fighting for supremacy over each other. But everyone's got their own place, and they're all doing their job very well. So that'll do it for this week. And next week, we are going to cover... I guess, actually, we don't know what we're going to cover next week. Sorry. My bad. Uh, we'll talk about what we're going to cover in patch notes tomorrow. We're going to do a roundup of everything that we went over with uh, Patch as our special guest. We'll go over everything with him. And we will see what happens next week. So, as always, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, comment any kind of cars you would like us to see and any kind of uh, detailing related items you'd like to know. Uh, so, yeah, I think that'll do it. Everyone have a good day, and I will see you next week.